How are you guys? Let's see if we've got uh, some people joining us now. Give us a like and a share, everybody. Let's see if you see it. <laughs> oh, I've forgotten something. Hold that for me, will you, bud? Thank you for showing up and helping other people see that there's a bigger game in here. So that stream's going to sit hanging for a bit, but I'm going to put on a mic here. He's got a <laughs> Who's a talkative chap? Hype the guys, ask them for likes and shares. Go on, go on, go on. You've got a, you've got a handsome face. This is a martial artist right here. I can only talk in front of a class of students. Fine fella. About Zimbabwe, get talking. Oh my god. Come on, you're up. You're up. You're up. We've got to get this audio. Don't be shy. We went live a little early on this. <laughs> the guy was supposed to look black, but he isn't. <laughs> oh, we know it. <laughs> hey, everybody, we're back. We're back. We're back. We're finally on. We're finally on. Hopefully, you can hear me. I hope this is good. Um, we are in. St. Albans town and these beautiful people are all in a safe space. How's it feel, the safe space? <laughs> and what are we safe against? Totalitarianism. Overreach government. Yes, indeed. So here we are. Uh, we're in St. Albans um, and we're surrounded by uh, community members, YouTube subscribers and friends that are in the UK and we're here to uh, celebrate the fact that you won't be gaslit in any way when you're around here my friends we all see their big dark and dirty game and we are planning and we are aware of the reset game yes shout out for the uk snipers come on <laughs> welcome welcome all ages shapes and sizes as you can see um we're doing a stream give the uh, give the stream a little bit of a thumbs up and a share um one of the key reasons, and I was mentioning this to the guys that are attending here, is if you think you're alone, you're the only guy in the office, you're the only guy in the house or the family, um, and you think you're the only person that actually sees the great game, let me just tell you, most of these people are local, have come a short drive only. There are many all around the world that see that the real safe space that is required is the citizens against dark state government total overreaching pushing us into a digital ubi society um, and how you can protect yourself so the idea of this stream is i'm going to actually take questions from um, the community and the attendees we've also got a list here if you're in the chat you can post uh, a question too so the whole game is how do i help you how do i help everybody here from what's going down so uh, maybe you can be master of ceremonies karen come and sit right up here most common questions, you, you shout them out for me. And uh, let's do question number one. Tons of love from Alberstown, Canada. <laughs> Canada spelt with a K. Okay, so the most common question is, where is safe for reset? And what, do, what to do if on limited income and capital? So I'm gonna repeat the questions as they get called out. Where is it most safe for reset? And what to do? if you're on limited uh, capital. So let's get everyone in on that. It's a very good question and it's one, these are the most common questions and I get it often. So the short answer is actually, it's not an easy one to answer. These guys, they're burning down the barn and you're one of the rats. And when people burn down the barn to get all the rats, they don't leave a door open for some of the rats to get out. Oh, well, let's let the smart rats survive. <laughs> let's leave a door open. It just doesn't work like that. They're burning down the barn and they wanna get all the rats. Uh, so you've, you're in a leper colony of riddled with lepers. There isn't a beauty queen in there who's clean. 
I'm afraid. Uh, there isn't any one. But that sounds a little bit negative and a bit dystopian. There are things that you can do. There are clearly things that you can do. I want to get everyone in here. It's great to have you all, by the way. Uh, camera at an odd angle. Um, there's things that you can do. And one of the best things you can do is there's inefficiencies in the game. There's always inefficiencies in the game. There's different legal systems. There's different nation states, different laws. Um, you know, there's a slow machine, even in government and state, that usually works against you. And sometimes it can work for you. So the key thing is to have options. So the big answer to this question, which is a very good question, where is safe? Ensure you have options. What does that mean? It means that you're probably, and I've been mentioning this to the UK posse that have shown up today, you probably got a British passport, you probably pay British tax, you probably have a British home and a British bank account. Uh, if you have a business, which I hope you do have, um, but if you're employed, that's still cool, um, you probably have a British company and you have a British bank account for your business. So that is a fail on the five flag strategies. Now, let me just tell you, you might not have enough time for five flags, but if you get two, you're already substantially better than somebody else. You now have an option. So the answer to this question is build options. Build options and expect to be able to arbitrage. We've got to become the cockroaches they treat us as and slip into the cracks in the wall in their own system that they've manufactured. So how do you do that? Set up structures. By the way, many people here will come. Anyone from crypto, give us a ray and a shout out. Who came in via the crypto? Yeah. So if you came in through the crypto door, do you know that you can have a company set up with a corporate crypto account? We've done all of this for ourselves and are doing it for our community in a location that will not see you pay tax on crypto gains. And that you can be the beneficial owner of that, but not show up on any searches as the beneficial owner. Who thinks that's going to be useful when they come collecting and the next crypto come, pump comes? Very goddamn useful. That's a first very keen, useful flag that you do. Now, we have services. I don't do this personally. Um, I've got too much to do. But we have services and people that are reliable and trustworthy. This is a world where actually everybody is... There's so much deception. And there's so much fakery and fuckery. You don't know what you're getting into and who you're getting into. So anybody I mention is somebody I've used for my own needs and has delivered. So we don't affiliate for anybody that underperforms. And if they start to underperform and we get a community member that says they never did X, Y, Z, we jump on it straight away, they correct it immediately or they're out. Um, so we, we have benefits because we have scale. There's others that think of us. So they have to look after us well to keep the stream of business. So you could have inside a reasonable time. And this doesn't always mean that you have to move. You have to go there. The benefit and like everything, there's negatives. We all know the negatives with the pandemic. But actually, there were some gains. You can do things remotely now that you re used to require multiple visits because those businesses had to adapt to survive. And this is another thing. So you can achieve a lot from behind your computer using our expertise and our partners without having to even get up uh, from your bed, essentially. So there's a lot you can and should be doing, and nothing you start is likely to be unworthy. Just having a small option. You now have, by the way, companies, you've got to understand everything is based on maritime law. And even on your birth certificate, your name, um, you are referred to the person as. This is legalese. You are incorporated. They're expecting your tax. By creating a new corporation, you're becoming like the shapeshifters themselves. You have another entity that you have power over, but it isn't you. I didn't do that. My company might have, but maybe I'm not even on that company. Maybe somebody, I don't know. Why don't you go approach the director? Yeah, go send a Spanish letter to such an address and see what they tell you. Well, good luck with that. You tie them up in the red tape that they tie you up in. It's their own game. Use their own weapons against them. Use their own weapons against them. Bureaucratic, different languages, different systems. It becomes hard. Listen. At the, in the, at the times that Tony Blair is about to get a knighthood and Julian Assange is sitting waiting to be extradited, the one thing I can say is look how long it's taken to extradite him. This is between Britain and America. They talk the same goddamn language. This is legal system. Use that delaying shit on them. The world will be a different place if you were that interesting and they were chasing you and it took the same 10, 15 years. By the time they'll have given up on the case, you're just not that big. 
you're just not that interesting. I take risks probably more than some of you in my public opinions. I'm just not that big and not that interesting. I really don't think that. You know, don't have delusions of grandeur. We're not that big. So start taking steps towards it. By the way, I don't want to be, this is not a plug fest, but if you want to take that forward, it's your decision. Support at the market sniper, it's going to invest to have money. And key thing is, you're in a bear market now. Now's the time to do it. You have time. Don't come and say, I've earned $3 million on my Bitcoin mega pump that's gone to 150000 Can you save me tax? Too late, my friend. You're sitting here in the UK. You've got your UK open bank account, your UK open crypto account. They've got you. They've got you by the testicola of Andolas and they're going to squeeze. And your eyes will water because that's what happens when people squeeze. So the point of the matter is do it now. You shouldn't be doing too much in a bear market. Get your admin done. Get your structures right because it probably will come back. It's not over. I'm bearish is short term, but it probably will come back. There was a second part to that. Um, uh, you could, and if, if you, also, if you haven't got much money, I think he said, yes, words to the effect yeah. of. For people who started late in this economic cycle with limited investments and income, how should I invest to increase and preserve wealth? So limited investment uh, income. So first of all, one of the biggest things, so I, I interviewed Matthew Letizia. Who likes Matthew Letizia? Anyone here? Hey. Yes, I interviewed him yesterday. We'll be putting that out. Uh, a real man of real principle, uh, a proper lad, uh, tells it exactly like it is. One of the reasons he's been able to say, stuff your, stuff your sky, I ain't wearing the BLM uh, badge. I don't like where they come from. I'm all for kick it out. Uh, anybody who boos anybody of a different complexion is an absolute savage. Uh, I'm all for it, but this has got different connotations. And that's what he said, and that's what he stood on, and I respect him. And he stopped going, um, and they, well, they, they canned him, basically. And then they started to try to cancel him. He's a legend of Southampton. For those that are watching this from other countries, he's one of the greatest players to ever play for the club. Uh, we'll have Australians and Americans. Sorry if I have to explain for the UK guys. Uh, and he, he said, I'll just stand down, guys. You don't need the shit. But if you ever need me for, you know, going to see the kids in cancer, I'm there. You know me. Um, so he's a proper gent, a man of principle. Lifetime at his club. This is a guy who felt when you speak to him. So always listen to the people of character and listen to what they say. The people of character are interesting. He said, I felt I owed them something. They gave me a chance when no one else gave him. I stayed with him all that time. He was, he was hunted by my club, Liverpool. He was hunted by Spurs. He didn't sign on any of them. He said, I didn't have to move. I liked where I was. I didn't have to have X, Y, Z, much more money. Now, his current power is that he doesn't need money. That's how you can stop them from bullying you. You have to build wealth. So part of the problem in this question is as yet not manifested. Now, we've got uh, someone who's 19 years old who flew in from Miami here today. So full respect to him. And I don't expect him to be seven figures to the good uh, at that age. So, you, you know, you might, not, you, might have had a, you might have had a crash. You might be midlife and had a bit of a crisis or a divorce. Those are nice balance sheets cancelling things. Any of those things can happen to the best of us. So what you've got to do, find something of value. Even this course, let me tell you, I've never been so hyper motivated because I am fucking angry and deeply impassioned by this situation we all find our in. This is, I, I would have been a different guy born in a different era, probably. I don't know what kind of a guy I might have been. But this has absolutely galvanized me. If you don't have a cause, join this cause. And there are a lot of people of principle who like to hear it said like it is. And you can find ways to add value. Build your following first. The money comes later. Chase money and the money runs. I teach this to our trader. Build value and find a way to be valuable to other people. Guess what? You start to get asked around a lot more. They start to say, hey, I need to respect you for your time. What, 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 can I, what do you want to charge for this? Just get useful uh, and find a way where you are most useful. You might be good at tech. I'll come and do the tech support. You can see I'm a complete clunkhead at this. I started the stream and I didn't even have the mic picked in. I could do with a second right now. Um, I would have paid happily, you know, a grand for a morning in the pub. Uh, with awesome people. Would you do that as a job? Hey, it's not bad if you're 19 and you suddenly got a grand. Guess what? You buy a couple of silver ounces, a couple of tubes of silver. It's not about the size. It's about the start. You don't ever start business right. You just start. You get it right along the way. People who sit in analysis paralysis never start anything and they never get anywhere. It's about getting started. And I got started. You should have seen my first YouTube. 
I generally don't delete YouTube. Everything that's wrong is still up there. But my first three were a fucking embarrassment. I mean, a complete fucking embarrassment. I was using Camtasia and I was pointing to parts and it was zooming in in parts that I was supposed to be, sh I wanted to show down here and it was recording somewhere else. And I was talking about a structure here and it was recording something else. You're talking about fumble fingered nightmare. That I, it was, that I had to remove, uh, essentially. But I put him up, I got my first three or four followers there, you know, apart from mum, uh, and that's where you start. You all, you all start, and that's the thing. So get adding value, and let me tell you, these times are extremists. These are the moment of your times. You're not gonna go out of fashion. I'm on trend, not because I chose to be, because I'm pissed off about what's going on around us in this world, and I want everyone who is like-minded to build wealth and my mission on my YouTube channel, and even more so in my community, is to help people build wealth in reset times. Because that all makes you Matthew Letitia. You can say to Sky, okay, if you want me to wear the communist badge, fuck you. I'll go somewhere else. Mm -mm. And guess what? He said he felt relieved. He lost the money and he felt deeply relieved. He wasn't happy to go along. Something in his soul as a principled man who spent his entire career as one club because they gave him a crack when he really needed it as a young man. Um, and the fans backed him and loved him from that day. You don't just shun someone who gives you that respect from day one. And that's a man of principle. And that is uh, why he's built wealth. And guess what? He's got new media. The minute you shut a door, let me tell you, new doors will open. You've got a clunky job who's forcing you to get vaxxed and do shit. Close the door. They're not your tribe. Open a new door and new people will be there. You get to start again in the right place. Get in front of the right wave. How stupid do some of these people? I spoke to a, a lady friend, her husband died, um, and she was in a job and she was pro uh, the uh, scientific uh, experimental medicine. And she had to tell two people that they would lose their jobs if they didn't do it. She admitted she didn't like it. The one guy went immediately into emergency hospital. He said, I've got gallbladder issues. This is going to trigger me. He went into serious, serious health uh, events at it. She hates herself for it. Don't let them use you as a stick to beat a fellow citizen or man. Be on the side of principle, whatever comes, whoever wins. Stand on principle. That is Matthew uh, Letitia. Stand on principle. It never goes out of fashion. Standing on principle. So that's quite a long answer to one question. It's going to take a while. But, but I think it deals with a lot of demons. And just tell me if it makes sense. Anyone, I mean, you guys are free to chime in and we'll repeat the question. Anything you would add on that or ask further on those points? Okay. Uh, say again? Completely true. Completely true. Thank you. Um, next okay, one. So next question. When you say get out, get out now of the market, does that mean sell my current shareholdings in my trading accounts? Or will I be able to get away with dollar cost averaging and riding it out until we can surface eventually? Does that person reference a particular market? Was he talking crypto as suspect? He just, he just said the market, but probably is crypto. He said he doesn't use leverage as well. Yeah. Okay. So, first of all, there's something very important to say about what I do. I've been leverage trading uh, and, a, and I'm a trader of many, many years. Uh, and unfortunately, there's no USB just to put it in here and just to give it to you. And even still, it would still be important. It doesn't mean I, I don't get a lot wrong. Um, so if you have not got the background to trading um, that I have, you've got to A, learn a bit more about it, take your time and make your lessons small. Pay in peanuts. Don't pay, you know, your university fees, you can choose for them to be in peanuts. Lose a burger, lose a Coke. Make a good night out for you and your missus in a nice restaurant. No one hangs himself on uh, that. You've got a lot of losses. So if you're just starting to trade, this man is not a trader. He doesn't want to talk investment. So overall, for the investors and the hodlers, our view was at around the 55K, you need to be out of Bitcoin and all ops. We've been shorting. So you know we've taken a couple of batches, quarter of a million stacks. But I'm good at this, and I've done it for a while, and I still get it plenty wrong. So I'm good, and then I'm occasionally very shit. Um, but it's a probability based game and generally it's paid me. This bear market has paid me money, lots of money. I'm talking six digit sum, not to provoke greed genie in anyone, but, I, but our community is trained and they've gone through learning, practicing, regular webinars. That's what we do to get you ready to do that. And if you're unsure, you follow the leaders initially until you can make your own calls of your own. So it's a, it's a cradle to grave crawl, then walk with guided assistance. Uh, with money management and all of that in. In his case, crypto remains in danger. Why? Because of macro. 
It's not that Bitcoin isn't undervalued. I get all the look into Bitcoin. All the major undervalued alerts are pink. And why aren't I buying? Because it's not about on-chain analysis anymore, guys. It's about what's going on in the big, bad world. It's how bad it's got. The debt markets are collapsing. The values are going down and the interest rates are going. You are in a debt system. Every dollar, every pound we're in Britain today was borrowed into existence, came with an ursary contract to pay interest. That means you have to keep expanding the money supply because where does the interest come? If the first 10 million pounds is there with a contract to pay 10%, in a year's time you need 11 million pounds in circulation. Otherwise, how do they pay the interest? You can't just swap it for everyone because everyone, one guy's really good at business and pays his interest and takes it off all the others. All the others are going to fail on their contract. So we are in an expansionary financial system. The minute you sign up for that, you're in a Ponzi game because it has to keep expanding. That's why interest rates are trended down. So much debt, the affordability for those that have accumulated this debt to keep the game going has to go down. But actually, inflation is a lot higher. Do you know in Germany, the last time they were at these rates, the interest interest rates were well over 14% when they had this level of inflation. Do you know what it was in America in the Faulkner years? Shadow Stats has the official interest rate, uh, inflation rate running between 16 and 18% right now. This is by their measure of 1982. They didn't just make this up. This is the government's measure. They changed it so many times that they remove all basis of comparison year by year. You put something in that's deflating, like technology, into the basket, you, you, you get lies, damn lies, and statistics. And if you keep removing the basis of comparison, how on earth are you comparing like for like? And that's the natural game. So they are all inflationists. Every central bank is an inflationist. They go set about denying it and hiding it. Shrinkflation. Your retailers are in the game. They will do uh, washing powder of an almost same size, but that's actually a 20% reducement in volume. And if you're not looking at the scale, and it'll be charged at the same price. You've been shrinkflated. They do the same in coffee. There's a Reddit that you can go and look at every item that's designed to look identical to the previous item, but has sig significantly less. Yet you pay the same price, that's 20% up if you're getting 20% less. That's how they pass on the inflation to you. And suddenly you say, well, we run out of coffee. We used to always have enough coffee for the month, and now we need more. So there's all forms of ways that they mask the fact that we're in an inflationary game. First, the inflation goes into assets. We've had inflation all this time. They've said there's been none. It was in the asset classes. I have an ex-townhouse home here that I bought for 159000 here in St. Albans. Value today, 550 grand a semi. My previous house, market value, 2.5 million pounds. How many people buy that? Only people with mortgages or very, very high net worth individuals. And what do those mortgages do? They keep pushing asset price up. So as that debt and the interest rates start climbing, it becomes less affordable. So we're going to go into a period where all these asset price inflations are going to deflate. That is the death of money. In the same way you borrow a money into existence, if a debt can't be paid and is written off, the asset and the liability disappears. So we're going to see money die. That's why you need to have cash. Everything they want to do is contrary to your interest. They want to digitize you. They want to cancel cash. You should seek cash. Carry abnormal amounts of cash on you. If the ATMs go dark, what are you going to do? People will still take the legal tender. And as I say, silver and gold coins, some physically on you. And if you've got volume, uh, elsewhere. So that's the game. Uh, did I did I nail this question? I think I hope so. Yeah, down the market, basically. Read that the next one. Will you hear yeah, it? Next one. Yeah, I'm a completely unvaccinated male with little cap capital in his twenties. Next step is getting out of the country, which is the UK. Do I build money here in the UK, or do I leave and get the hell out of here and figure things out in a receptive country? Okay, so. Basically, his question, I'll repeat the question uh, for the stream guys as well. Uh, I live in the UK. I haven't made particularly much uh, money. I'm unvaccinated. Um, do I leave the country? So first of all, it's not for me to tell someone whether they should leave his country or not. This is quite a personal question. I'm going to give you the pros and cons and he will have to decide. Do I leave the country because I don't want to be pressured into vaccinations and various other things and I'm try and manifest elsewhere? Uh, doing something else in the new place 
or do I stay and try and make some money and then uh, then later go? So where are we in the cycle? So most people that called the system's going to end, they've been wrong. They kept the plate spinning a lot longer. They kept the music playing. The, the music's playing. The Titanic is already cracked in the bow and both halves are raising like this and the band is still jamming good. And there's a lot of people still dancing and they haven't seen the water coming on board. Let me say to you this. Um, this is, in my opinion, your reset. You're watching it happen. It is no one single event. We always like to simplify things down so it has a label. Lehman. It was over when they started giving out ninja loans to people on social welfare checks and were selling that corrupted debt to other banks as high value, high yielding, awesome debt assets when they knew it was garbage. And when they piled a whole lot of it on there and said, we've diversified the risk away, instead of diversifying the risk, you went from a small pile of shit to a big pile of shit. You can slice and dice shit as many ways you like. It stays shit. And when you export an asset like that into other banks, you are exporting the virus. You note the language I use. They created something filthy, dark in their little laboratory of financial engineering on Wall Street, and they exported it to Swiss banks, German banks, over the whole world. And it was a virus. It was a financial virus worth nothing. So, you know, going back to the question, do I leave the country? For me, reset is much closer than you think. Um, unfortunately, the Western good life countries are the most targeted right now. It's ironic, but Eastern Europe, that have seen Bolshevik communism very close to their doors, is a better place than Western Europe. That doesn't mean you have a better standard of living now. The trend is better. Remember what I said about positioning for a trend. I came over here in the UK, I started a property business. Everyone told me, don't buy, we've had a major crash in property. It was 99, I came in. I said, no, it's globalization, we can have a sustained low interest rate business. And I started wholesale buying developments of new build with a Midlands uh, Nottingham lad. Uh, and we built a, a company, 7 million revenue. We were making unbelievable margins, 25% on some of them we were buying wholesale. We were feeding the buy to let boom. Um, we were selling shovels to gold seekers and everything. Why? Because I positioned in the trend and I started to lose my mojo for the business around six and seven. The valuers were pushing everything through. You could have stuck whatever number you goddamn wanted on that thing. They would have signed, 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 they were pushing away. And in America, you had the robot valuers. You didn't even have a human being. They actually just had a machine that went stamp, approved, stamp, approved, stamp approved and of course they went the ninja loans it was all about a pump and dump scheme they created so much toxic debt so um i don't know how i got back on that topic again because i'm going uh, on tangents what we were uh, saying so uh, we were talking about do you leave the country um for me the best places are the places that uh, were previously maybe less cool than the western europe the commonwealth australia canada jesus christ western europe these are now become the Bolshevik hell holes. They've decided to do the communist experiment. You'll actually be better in Serbia, Romania, places you haven't thought of visiting. Uh, Latin America, they're more laid back. The, the manner in which I get treated as a gringo over there in Panama, it's awesome. I got lost. I'm going down a one way, the wrong bloody way with my headlights on and hooting and getting people out the way, not even realizing it. Cop pulls me over and says, where do you need to go, gringo? shows me and uh, I follow him all the way. That's how they treat you there. They want you there. They want your money there. They look after you. Ask how you'll be treated uh, by your local police uh, in terms of things like that. Go where you're going to be treated best. And it ain't home because they got you. They got your everything. They've got your national insurance number. They've got everything on you. So uh, I would say start again. I would make the move. Live uh, cost if it were me starting young. I just don't like start planting seeds in a farm I'm about to leave. You know, I'm going to say, throw my hand in, think hard about the decision I make, own my own outcomes, and go and start again. Uh, and build friends, socialize yourself, uh, engage and share your thoughts and cluster, join groups, Reddit groups, whatever the case may be, and start getting connected in your new country. If you're going to a Latin America or a place like that, learn Spanish, it helps. A great deal don't expect everyone to want to be your friend if you can't speak um, but there are tools for that as well um, are there ways to transfer an existing pension pot existing pension pot to a more maneuverable vehicle like a SIP but more specifically can this be applied to public sector workers so the question is are there ways 
to get out of your pension. So this is a big bugbear for me, and this is a major red alarm call. Any of you with private pensions here in Britain, that's with all the usual suspects, Standard Life, Norwich Union, and geez, I can name them all. Um, I used to work, by the way, in the financial services industry, consulting to them. I saw the whole subprime thing happen. We had a non-standard lending report that never sold. It sold about three units. Piece of research that we would follow up with it. And then suddenly they rebranded it subprime, and then Barclays, HSBC, everybody was buying it. It became the hottest thing. I watched this whole chase down into the, the worst debt. So pensions, what happen, how do pensions work? So mutual funds, if you run a mutual fund, you probably have a pension as well. Pensions are opaque. You don't get to see how well they're doing. You know what happens? The worst investments get put in the pension pot. The mutual fund where they brag quarterly about how they've done, those are the best <coughs> shares. All the good calls go in there. Um, the bad calls or the long-termers and the hanging on to old dead wood happens in the pensions. And pensions are stuffed with the most dangerous asset class out there right now. What am I going to say? Bonds. Bonds. Did you hear the man? Bonds and debt. So right now, people are in shock. So the financial world functioned on a 60-40 portfolio. This was the golden Alexia of success. 60% equities, that's your risk. 40% bonds. So in bonds, when the equities went down, the bonds went up. Why? Because they're safe. You hear that? We're in a safe space, by the way. Did I really? <laughs> safe space. Bonds are safe. Oh, no, no, no. We're not letting, any, we're not letting bond James or any, any other variety of bond into this safe space. Let me tell you, bonds are not safe. So simple law of economics, <coughs> supply and demand. When you have an absolute shit ton of something, it's not valuable. How much would you pay for a pair of Crocs made in China along with the other 500 million that came on the, the 20 crates? Uh, not a great deal, I'm expecting. Not a great deal. Now, debt has never been in more great supply. So who's the buyer? Have, there's no one ever asking. Economics 101. Massive supply, low price. It's simple, isn't it? It's how the game works. I mean, if we all had Bugatti Veyrons, they wouldn't be uh, a million euros, would they? Or two million or four million. God knows what they are. Scarcity is value. Ergo, gold, silver, and many other things. Scarcity is value. Something you can't print that is scarce, that has unique properties, is value. Debt. What's unique about it? It's a contract somebody's going to renege on. It's a guaranteed failure. You're buying a future bad debt. There is so much of it around. So I'll take you to the extreme case of Japan. Japan, 280% debt to GDP. What are they doing currently? They have an inverted pyramid like this of demographics. So that means the very few young carrying a very high lot of healthy, elderly Japanese that are all drawing pensions. They all bought their government's lie. All the pensioners. This is a generic statement. It doesn't mean 100% all. I'm just being a bit English in that. Basically, most of them are all heavily invested in Bank of Japan debt because it was safe. And the wives used to buy it. They all understand the crack. So now they are doing what's called yield curve control. You see how they put a very clever technical word. You think, oh, that sounds sophisticated. So what is yield curve control? Well, yield curve is a fancy way of saying interest rates. What's the payment? What's the yield? Yield curve control means manipulation. Control is manipulation. Because you're not letting a free market force decide this. You're deciding it. So how are you deciding it? Well, I'm going to print up a whole bunch of yen, devalue the currency to hold up a Ponzi scheme. That is oversupplied. There's absolutely tons of horse manure fertilizer. It keeps coming. We've not got... And we're keeping the price up. And there's all this horse manure, and we're all bidding it up. We're saying, I'll pay 10,000 for that uh, half, half a kilo of manure. No, 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 12,000. <laughs> give me a quarter of a kilo, and I'll give you 15 grand. This is the, the market they've created, a completely fake market for an absolute proliferation of stuff. Go to the countryside, you'll, you'll have as much horse manure as you want, <coughs> as much as you can afford to pay and carry. So they are holding that up and they're sacrificing the currency. Hence the USD JPY that through the market sniper we call long time ago, we've been watching this for an extended, the phrase squeezy squeezy Japanesey has been directed at the most indebted uh, Japanese <coughs> nation, the technical pattern. We follow the money. 
We are all, we're not the best macro technical guys. We're the only macro technical guys. We look at big time frame charts. We see the big moves and we call them as insane as it sounds. And what's happened? A seven signal move on the USD JPY. And now you hear all the banks of the world are shorting the Japanese debt. You are at the forefront ahead of institutional JP Morgan and Citibank by going long USD JPY with us two years ago. We call the end of the debt cycle a macro capitulation into COVID. COVID was a trend change event. Log scale, the debt yield, it's a macro spill. All trends end. A downtrend ends with a final macro spill and an uptrend always ends with a blow off. It's very typical of exceeding dot com boom for your pets.com, all of this. We looked at the charts and said, this is the end for debt. The 40 year is over. And I'm not a reversal caller. I take it very, very, very cautiously to call reversals. I am a continuation trend is your friend guy. If you watch the channel, you know that. So debt hit its nadir. They printed. We can't even get a true number. I've heard numbers between 4.5 and 7 trillion. And I always say, mm -hmm. people don't understand the scale of 7 trillion. 1 trillion, and I'm going to do it again for everybody, and you're going to finish my sentence because I'm going to hammer this into you. If you count it for every second to a million, it would take you 12 and a half days, night and day. Every day, one, two, three, for every second. To get 1 billion, 32 and a half years. 32 and a half years. We've got men here that have come from 19 years old from Miami to be here. Half the audience is not 32 years old. You wouldn't have done anything else but count to get to 1 billion, the scale of 1 billion. A trillion, a single trillion, 32,000 years. Think in history where you would be going and what this planet looks like 32,000 years ago. I have no idea. I really don't. It is such a big number. So these people created seven of those, or four and a half. We don't know. It changes depending which newsreader you're going. This is an absolute overreaching Ponzi scheme. They borrowed that money into existence. Debt. And now you've gone from asset inflation to home price inflation. So we had the stock markets. Those were the first to pump the most liquid. They had an absolute blow off. Likes of ARK going insanely up. All of these things. Tesla. Incredible. The battery car could have been done a hundred years ago. He didn't invent it. My father was in Germany doing battery cars and the Americans killed it in the 70s during OPEC. He's a front man, runner for Rockefeller money. Believe you me, he was at school a mile away from me the same time I was there in Pretoria. I'd love for him to be a South African hero. He's not your friend. He's not your friend. I mean, you knew this Twitter game and all of us. He's not there for free speech until it doesn't suit him. He's a front man. So, yeah, we dealt a lot in, in that. But uh, I'm going to make sure I've answered the question because I'm sidebarring quite a lot. Yeah, how to basically transfer a pension, I think you've... So pensions... Get your pension in a self-invested and get yourself some gold miners if you can. Uh, and do not buy gold ETFs. They will renege. So such is the degree. You're going to see counterparty risk and failure on a scale you've never lived through. <coughs> Ask the people who lived through world wars. We've almost had, dare I say it, a privileged existence despite all that's gone on. You will see there will be no one left to sue about the money you've lost. That's how bad it will be. ATMs will go dark, you won't get cash. There will be a moment the music stops, my friends. The music is still playing. The day the music stops, there's going to be X amount of chairs. And if you've booked yours already, you're sitting down. The rest are going to keep dancing down a mine shaft with a long way down. And they're going to fall very, very hard. You should be keeping abnormal amounts of cash. This is my opinion. Remember, it's not advisory. I'm not a financial advisor. I cannot give you advice. You should be keeping abnormal amounts of cash because when the music stops, the man with cash will have the opportunities. I have saw it in Ukraine, microcosms of this in Ukraine. People who bought brand new Porsche Cayennes, they weren't six months old, selling them for 20% of what they paid them for to get some cash when they shut the, 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 the ATM's dark. Do you want to be the guy who bought the car and is trying to get 20% of what you paid for it, a fancy car? Or do you want to have gold, silver and cash on you? Cash is actually right now, it's, it's very important because we're going to have a deflation, a death of money. And everyone will take cash. And I can absolutely guarantee you, I take silver ounce coins and gold ounce coins for any of my services any day. 
I may even give you a discount and say, send them to, if you buy there and you have them delivered to my vault, you're on. Uh, I'll, I'll give it preference. So um, I think we've done that one. Yeah. Um, I would like to know what old coins um, have a good prospect in crypto. So the question is around best old coins might take uh, in crypto. So let me always be very, very candid about what I'm good at and what I'm not good at. I haven't spent time, just give the guys the other side of the view actually to change it. I haven't spent a whole bunch of time researching every single altcoin. There's much better guys out there than me. I'll tell you where I'm good at. I hate bullshit and I, I, I feel that if something's good, the money follows it and chases it. And you can see it in the chart. I trust patterns because that is the combined nature of lots of people uh, participating in a voting system called the market. No one person should be coordinating. I've never seen a conspiracy that made uh, HBF set up. I've never seen a conspiracy that planned to make a head and shoulders on a target. That is randomized, defragmented people's opinions being expressed. So the shoal is the wisdom. When you see the shark in the water and you see that perfect pattern around him, the safe zone and the tunnel that he swims through, no one fish made that pattern. But the emotional reactions to the stimuluses of fear, greed, and danger made the pattern. And that I trust. I don't trust a single fish. Uh, I trust the, the nature of fear and greed. What about Nancy Pelosi, then? Oh, great leading indicator, isn't she just? <laughs> yeah, she seems to have been. We have the news before the news. But Nancy, boy, oh boy, does she get the news before the news. Her husband's a very great indicator. Uh, so. Uh, so for actual fundamental comment on alts, there's better people than me. I, I read Reset a lot on that. And I can tell you they have a plan for Ethereum, without a doubt. I would be shocked if Ethereum disappears. They definitely have a plan for Ethereum and it's not all friendly. They've spoken, Vitalik has been with um, Chicago professors speaking about how they will have your properties on the blockchain and you will be in a system that if they feel you've undervalued your property, because you're paying tax. They're going to use wealth tax to get you out of your properties, by the way, because many of you that have mortgages are going to be shaken out when we have an interest rate spike. And then they're going to turn the masses against the few lucky ones who paid their mortgage off. And they're going to put high wealth taxes. Only you're going to be given a chance to value your property. And they're going to have a system at any point. And this has been documented and written up. None of this I make up. It's all sourced. You can Google it that on your property valuation, if someone else considers it to be undervalued or a buy, you are in a forced contract to sell if you've undervalued your property. So they will either extract on you on a disproportionate property taxes, where you've continually got to come in high on your property to not lose your new uh, conservatory you built on and whatever, whatever, or someone else can buy you. And imagine BlackRock close to the Fed that gets to print up all these central bank digital tokens. Well, they could pay silly money, inverted commas money, and take everybody's property. I mean, imagine you had to value your home at 10 million central bank digital tokens and they get to extract a million uh, of the same off you for your tax for that year. Well, the goal is BlackRock, Vanguard, Blackstone, these are buying up at extremely high prices. Why would they do that? Because they know what's happening to the money. They're giving you away monkeys that are sliding down greased holes. They aren't holding their altitude at all. They know they're giving you shit fiat that's going to die and they will own a physical home that will still be there after whatever happens. Physical is the game. Digital is the trap. A large part of what went on with Bitcoin and crypto, guys, and I'm a participant, not a hater. If there's a chance to make money, I'm going long, I'm going short. And I'd love to see Bitcoin make, you know, 100 grand plus, 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 and a lot of our communities would be making money on that. But physical is the game, and crypto has served a role of on-ramping people into digital money, which is the goal. And of, of who ate all the pies? Karsten Semenya. I call him. He's a guy about as big as a house. And you can go watch this YouTube as well. And he says, the thing we love about central bank digital tokens is not only can we, we can see what the person is buying, we have the power to refuse the purchase. 
we can add money in, in deflationary times and we can take uh, proportionately out of everybody's wallets in inflationary times. We can control the money at every level. Digitally, someone could control your money and take out of your account. Real-time tax you. Do you know the compounding effect, the negative compounding effect of paying tax? I've said this one 101 times as well. Double a dollar without paying tax. Over 20 years, you're over a million. Double a dollar, pay 30% tax at the end of every year. You're in the mid-20s. Grand, in terms of that. So imagine you pay real-time tax. As your income comes in, that's all. And you're in a business, private business. It's almost like PAYE instantly, and they take it straight away. You don't get a chance to compound that money and pay your tax at the end of a year, a year later. That is very, very destructive. This is absolute power. They will never let you have your own money because controlling money is the ultimate power. They will never let you have your own money. Understand this. They will provide money systems for you that they retrain and actually gain further control. This is the pursuit of absolute power. It stretches and it extends and it extends till the ultimate end game. Rothschild said it himself. I care not who makes the laws of the land, providing I control the issuance of money and the grounds upon it which. You will learn the meaning of that absolute power if you don't understand it now. So Ethereum's going to stick around. It's got a role to play. I think Bitcoin's going to stick around and it'll probably at some point when they pivot go up. But they could crash it down that most hodlers will have such carnage in their life with the problem reaction solution. So I mentioned this to a few people already in the pub. Let's go through the great financial crises that have happened. You had the dot-com boom. You had the bust. Britain didn't even really go in a recession, by the way, during that period. America did. They cut interest rates. That was the dot-com boom. The great financial crisis, what happened there? Wow. Now, that was different. We had plenty bank failure. We had bailouts for banks. We actually had a bail-in in Cyprus where they shaved everybody's money. And then they did quantitative easing, one, two, three, and four, for a sustained period through 08, 09, 010, 11. Who remembers how shit those years were? How tight it was? How hard it was to work? Those were hard yards, real slog, not much money about years. Unless you were in the banking system, of course, and you got bailed out, and it was all good again and Christmas bonuses. You really paid. They socialized on the world the cost of that system, and they privatized the games to the banking cartel. You carry that can. They raped you. You either get it or you don't. They raped you, and they proliferated that pound in your pocket and made many more of them, so that that's why you're paying more for this beer. Cheers to everyone in the room. Cheers, Ray, for the beer that was so much more to, that could have been cheaper. <laughs> they <laughs> proliferated that thing to reduce your buying power. That's what they did. And they're continuing to do it. And now inflation is no longer an asset prices and property. The most commoditized item. Commoditized means not profitable to do. It's a commoditized thing. It's not a high profit. If you're in the economics, you learn. Commodities, you know, you've got to have a really big farm to make money rearing beef. You don't do it on an acre. These guys in Canada, they've got so efficient, 40,000 hectares isn't a big farm now. You can't, it's not economically viable. They'll run a 100,000 hectare farm with five people and combine harvesters. That's how, that's how efficient farming has got. There's been deflation in farming, yet you're paying more for your wheat and your bread. We've never had more efficiencies. A hundred years ago, a man had to have a horse with a piece of wood in the ground, plowing it. This is done in, on an industrial scale now, and it's still... So you've actually had deflation and such technological advancement in farming and what are you doing the inflation is now showing even in the commodities so that is the last stage of inflation it's not the beginning when you start to feel it at the petrol pump the milk and the bread you know it's now in everything the cancer is in the bones my friend it's not just starting and you just got a mole and you can save it it's too late we're gone you can't turn this oil tanker around even if you wanted to. If you started pursuing all the right... If you made me Prime Minister of the world or Britain or whatever, and I started doing all the most economically smart things, I cannot stop this Titanic going down. It's smashed in half. I could just tell you where to stand that you'll be the last one to hit the cold water. 
and maybe I, you, there's a lifeboat or two in that. That's the best I can do. I can't stop the shit pipe you're going to crawl through. Shawshank Redemption. You want your fucking freedom? You're going to walk and you're going to crawl that shit pipe. You are in a prison that has been contained where other people have made the goddamn rules. You want to stand in the river with your hands in the air and be washed of that captivity? You're going to crawl the shit pipe. And we've all got to call it. We don't get a choice. There's no ticket around. There is no ticket around that. You are going to do Shawshank. I refer affectionately to Britain as the muddy windswept island and occasionally Shawshank. I severed ties with Shawshank. You can too. You can become a citizen of the world and you can go where you treat it better. That doesn't mean you're going to escape COVID restrictions. It doesn't mean you'll escape everything, but you can arbitrage. You have options. I can go to South Africa. I'm going to go to visit my friends in Mossel Bay. There's a farm, 500 hectares. You can buy it for under a million dollars. Free uh, two boreholes of water, pumping more water than you need. Wild game on it. Planning permission to put five villas of like-minded community members as my neighbors. I can pick my fucking neighbors, make some money, build a house, and solar panels. 100% power resilient. They have grid downs. Guess what? You laugh at those nations. You're laughing at the future microcosm events that are going to be visited on you this winter here in Britain. This winter here in Britain, you will face power grid downs. That's my prediction for you. Germany is assured. They're already preparing the people for it. And how and why? Because Russia bad? Okay, if you say so. Um, that is what's coming. You are going to see and learn the lessons. The West has had it easy. We've got a soft underbelly. We're fat and flabby, and we're going to, we're going to burn fat like no time, no time before. And if you either prepped for this, or you're not. And let me tell you, to some, many people, I want to make sure, this isn't a doom and misery porn pitch. I don't get off on this. Um, there are real things. Ment this is a psyop, and it's a test of your mental health. So my framing, I was in the military. We had to do obstacle courses. They made it mean and goddamn nasty. It's your time to do an obstacle course. Accept it and recognize there are rewards for making it through. And then say, we're going to work as a team. I'm going to surround myself. We're going to pull up. The fit guy is going to jump the wall and help push up the fat kid up the wall. Uh, the tall guy is going to grab the rope for everyone else to swing. So the, the strong guy is going to carry the kid. Uh, the ladies are going to get a piss press up in the back backside from the strong guy. We're going to help everyone over. If you aren't in that teamwork mindset and you've got a rabble of defragmented individuals that are just being grouped up randomly as five and six and you're all going to attempt to do this obstacle course on your own, you're going to fuck out. You're going to fail. They've set this obstacle course. It's the biggest one you're going to run in your life. If you accept that and you say, awesome, a challenge, I am up for it. Taking action and preparing is mental health for you. This is a psyop on mental health. You will get depressed. You will be deers in the headlights unless you take action and you prep. If you say, listen, these are the times I'm born in. Let me tell you, there's World War I kids that were shot in the head at 16 years old in a muddy trench in northern France. Just by standing here, I'm telling you, you have had a good bloody life if it ends today. And now I'm saying, go be a goddamn leader. Go be a leader now to all around you. Be kind to the ones who don't get what you speak. You can divide and conquer them or um, uh, create a division. We don't do that. What we need is less division by race, gender, sexuality, and every other scam they want to push on us. They want to create, they need to keep the crabs ever more divided in this goddamn bucket during these times. That's their goal. Because God help if we were organized. God help if we all said no. What a problem they would then have. What a problem they would then have. Kieran, give us the next question, please, bud. Uh, Francis, what's your full trading journey um, from when you first started until now? Yeah, so I'll, I'll give the edited abbreviated versions. That's talking about me and you know, some people like that, but I don't want to be too self-indulgent. I'm, a, I was a, I'm an emotionally set up to be an absolutely garbage trader. So I am high energy. I have skittish biology, I've got a fast metabolism, I have a coffee, I run around like a guy on five lines of coke. Um, I am up and down like a, uh, a jack-in-the-box. Um, I'm impatient. I am, everything is probably wrong with me. Most people in this room, fundamentally, 
The only thing about me is I kept showing up. I was in the army. I became a lieutenant. Um, I'm still in touch with my corporal today. I had the worst military. I was always untidy. I was always being chased. The only difference is they put us through hell and I just kept showing up. I was resilient mentally. I kept showing up. And other people kept falling. Better soldiers. They were neater. had a clean rifle when I didn't. I carried a sandbag for my whole border phase. I ran on sandy roads in Namibia with a sandbag on my back. But I was there the next morning. Other guys, oh, injuries, oh, my shin splints, oh, my this, sick note. That was the great... That was the graceful way of departing. Others were chucked off as they fired a shot under pressure, deny you sleep. They used to um, uh, make us drink hot water. I was always in trouble and make you throw up your breakfast and then send you out for a full day of training. They, did, they got away with things you wouldn't get away with today. The only thing is resilience and belligerence. So I'm utterly belligerent. I've just kept showing up. I've kept showing up at training. I've lost more money than most people have earned. In, and I've cocked it up. So eventually I had to build something that catered to my many frailties. And that's HVF method. HVF method is a submittance to process. Recognizing you don't control what you think you control. Recognizing that the market will do whatever it's going to do and you might not be right. I would suffer from certainty and absolute conviction. I suffered from every major mistake that every major trader has made chronically. And I've repeated them ad nauseum. You would doubt that I had any intellect if you knew the amount of times I tripped over the same step. You'd say, what do I have to fucking do to tell you that that step's a little higher than the other one? Um, so ad nauseum pattern repeating. And we are so prone to that. And it doesn't matter. It's got nothing to do with IQ. It's got nothing to do with everything. Everyone here has potentially got all the skills they could be to be a capable trader. You have to keep sh sh uh, showing up. You have to learn small. <clears throat> Pay your university fees in peanuts. And when you're in stride, take your payouts in big dinero. That's the game. Managing losses is probably the most important thing. But I blew up accounts countlessly in my 20s, 30s. And even in a hedge fund in 40, I still flamed out at a point. So I've committed every error. Um, HVF method protects me from myself. That's basically the trading journey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the best country to escape the new world order? So again, the question on countries. So again, I'll say you there is no one. There isn't Narnia. There's no Narnia, I'm afraid. We can't go through the closet and come out and it's all unicorns and fluffy teddy bears. Uh, but there are arbitrage and cracks and their inefficiencies. This is the best place to be in countries where you can wheel and deal a bit. Government officials, you can get a dark license. I've done a few things. I've done it out of need where you can pay and get something done. This is not the place for places like Germany that are organized, have everything in a database and are rabid extractors. The worst place to be right now would be Germany, in my opinion, in the heart of the EU. Because they're so efficient, you change your mailing address, they're coming for tax on everything, they're extracting, they hate entrepreneurs, they hate business. So that's my don't be there place. But there's other places in Europe that's very much the same. So you know, I wouldn't say France is necessarily much better. Uh, but the difference is, it's what you do in those countries as well. The key is, if you get out of urban areas, if you get into localized, you know your local farmer, you know your neighbors, you get into a community like ours, and I'm, there are others, of course, in other places. We've got guys that are buying in the same area, an Alta Vista in Panama, they have hummingbirds on their beautiful, I call it hummingbird house, drinking water. They've got a swimming pool, they're from Scotland. You know, they've never had a house that big. Um, uh, great hills, the sea is just down there. I like being by the ocean, I like warm climates. It's a hard sell, a lab flu, in warm climates. It really is, it's a hard sell. It's much easier here in Britain. So I do, I do, the, non, uh, I do the warm places, it's just a laugh. I just laugh at them. Mock your totalitarian dictators, mock them, they hate it. They absolutely hate it, laugh in their face. It's good for your mental health, it's terrible for them. It, and it gives others courage as well. Laugh at your pretend captors. They're not as strong as they think they are, and we're going to win out in the end. Laugh. So, the, again, countries, I like warm, I like Latin, uh, American places, but obviously there's language barrier because of other reasons, like tax, finance. Where are you in business? Where are you in life? I know what works for me. Eastern Europe, I've suggested, for those that don't want to go too far, you can still have a short haul flight to your kids if you're a divorced mom or dad or whatever. Um, it's not bad. Uh, you can have a good life. Uh, you want to be off grid and you need your five flags though. So wherever you are, have five flags. Start working towards them. Start with two. Every journey of, uh, of 
thousand miles starts with the first step. Start with a step. You're just one step better off than you were the yes previous day. This is incrementalism. Keep making it incrementally better. Every day write down the one small thing you're doing that's going to make your setup for the great reset that little bit better. It might be phone this person to find out about that. Conduct the research, make a decision and apply. And that could be an entire week. Each one of those steps that I mentioned in there could be a day. Every day, recognize that you put another tick in the box. This incrementalism, again, mental health, positivity, and surround yourself with people like these that understand and are playing the game and sharing information. <laughs> I've got to tie this thing up in the tree here. Plenty of the guys here. Welcome to everyone, by the way, and thank you for attending. So I think we did that. It's, the answer isn't any one country. It's what you do in that country. Um, and giving yourself lots of options. Okay, would you say it's a good, would you say, is it a good idea to buy a property to live in now for cash? Or should I have a mortgage? Or should I store it in bullion and other assets and, and let it, as it will appreciate more than a UK property? So the reason why this is a really interesting question is, normally, so is it a property to live? Does he specify yeah. that? Yeah. So, okay, for living. So there's a difference between investment property generally and one that actually gives you home-based value. Because of wanting to store bullion, it's much better to not be a tenant uh, and be an owner. Because you can do what you want in your own house. I don't need to know all your good ideas. Uh, don't tell everybody. Um, but I mean, you can dig a hole under your kitchen. And you can do all sorts of things. You can do midnight gardening. Good for you. You can do whatever you want and it's your title. What you must be wary of is a property ties you usually, if it's your sole property and you decide to live there, it ties you to a particular place. So you're making a bigger decision than you think. Normally, it's not a big decision. You're born in Britain, you live in Britain, you speak English, you have a passport, your friends are in Britain, it's not a big issue. The problem is we're in totalitarian time and we're going to pivot from one system to another and you have no visibility of how that new system looks, apart from a dystopian changeover that's going to be more problem than fun, a required reaction that could be a lot of social unrest and a lot of other things, and then a final situation where they're going to introduce what they plan to introduce all along. That's what's going to go down. Now the problem is, I have a suspicion they want to own most of the property. They want to turn you into tenants in your own home. So there is a game that they might have a really good plan that's going to make it really hard on you to stay in your own home. So being mobile and fluid is very valuable right now. Severing ties, as hard as it is, especially when there's children and schooling involved, if you can engineer it. We've got guys that are home teaching. We've got two Dutch families, one with four kids, the other with two. All came to us in Panama. They're doing home teaching, they're buying uh, properties, they've gone to visit a friend in uh, RSA, they've come to Panama, they've checked out Cyprus, northern, uh, South Cyprus with us, a whole bunch of places. Uh, obviously that decision is much more complex when you talk about children, there's wives you've got to bring along, if you're a lady you've got to bring your husband along. So these are difficult, these are difficult single answer questions. But severing a tie with your home nation should be one of the things you look to do. If you don't and you can't and you won't, set up entities that are not of your home uh, location so that you can build assets that you control ultimately but are not easily tracked to you and that you can um, then invest in so that you don't have all your gold ounces in the same pot. Uh, the next question is similar to the first. It's basically, how do I keep my assets away from the bankers? How do I keep my assets away from the bankers? Uh, this person is concerned about how trackable and seizable things might become in the future. He's right to be concerned. So I'm, I've already resigned to the fact that I'm going to lose some fiat in a bank accounts across the world. I'm expecting it. It's, I manage, I've got to have fiat in bank accounts because I'm engaged in the system. I've got to pay for things. It's the accepted way of paying, etc., etc., etc. So, except you're going to lose money. They're going to effectively do some form of bailing in all of this. I'm pretty sure. And the, but what they're going to do is they're going to rebate you after a long period of IMF, G7, G8, G12, 
meetings telling you how hard night and day they're working with you to solve this great dilemma and this oh, this chaos is also an opportunity it's time to think radically like you've never thought before yada yada fish paste isn't this all awesome we've come up with this amazing new solution in fact we already came up with it years ago we're just implementing it now uh, and here's how the new game rolls forward that's what they're going to do you're going to have this pantomime spun to you by your mainstream media repeater stations so you're going to lose fiat don't let your fiat in your bank accounts run too high you must leave in there with that which you need to function and the music will suddenly stop it'll come on a day you'll be out and it's happened it's done if you haven't bought your gold and your silver if you haven't built your cash pile don't tell everybody where you put it have it in a number of places um, you won't get it and the ATMs will go dark the mobile network might even go down you know remember 77 mobile network went down remember they control all of these things they've got a switch that you won't even be able to talk to your wife to say quick quick honey dump the cash go draw 10 grand something's about to hit <coughs> you're not gonna be able to do it you've got to do everything as if it's happening tonight you've got to be ready and if you aren't there you've got to set about doing it every day you get more is extra extension it's extra time in your football match that you've not yet won you're lucky to get it you've got to get a goal quick because otherwise you know it's going to penalties and they own the ref so you're in you've got to fiat is going to be taken i'm too heavy fiat i'm dumping i'm dumping i'm dumping i've got a cash generator business um it's things coming in all the time i'm lucky that way do the same but don't hold it there the banks are my personal opinion is commercial banking is not going to continue for retail i said commercial retail banking for your check accounts and these sort of things i actually think that's almost going to cease you're going to have a direct relationship with your central banking hub so many have been talking about this you'll have a wallet they'll control this this business retail banking with these high street branches they're going to have airpods and accommodation in there you know you're going to be uh, stuck there you are going to lose whatever's in your bank and by the way i'm in cyprus 47.5 percent above 100 grand was taken straight of everybody people had millions of euros in there they got given so technically it wasn't lost what did they get given shares in a bankrupt bank that's that's a shit coin if ever you want to talk crypto shit tokens that's a shit coin what does he do now what do they do they collapse it everybody sells it they can buy them all back for us for a fraction of a cent and then they own the back bank after everybody said jesus what do i want this garbage is never going to get fixed or you can hodl it for 19 20 years in inflation and maybe it'll go to two cents good luck you've been handed you've been rinsed it's simple you've been raped you've been bent over and given one <laughs> simple as that you've got to decide how hard you're going to let them do it to you and whether you've got a stash on the side you know if you keep all your fiat uh in gold and silver in a sovereign place and manner and a lot of it at home and a lot of it elsewhere they might just pull your pants down and give you a paddy whack and you're off and the other guy gets a proper seeing to because he never listened just decide how badly are you going to get raped because you're going to bend they're going to they control the levers they're going to do this so that's on money you're absolutely right it's coming and what do you do you do the obvious things let them tax you the least because whatever they're going to give you it's going to be a major haircut ask the people who were in euro land when the euro was introduced how that worked out whether they felt the cost of living went up for them or down it's not one ask an italian especially uh what is your favorite quote and what is your favorite book i've got lots of favorite quotes i, I don't have problem talking as some of you realize um they'll never let you have your own money i repeat it three times because i really want to hammer it home everybody thinks bitcoin fixes this they will never let you have your own money they won't let it They'll, they must control it it's a sale where's the santa claus satoshi nakamoto this is adults fairy tales for adults in my opinion where is he why didn't he come and collect his nobel prize this is the greatest invention since sliced bread he solved the question of the ages digitalized scarcity where is he no he just left hundreds of billions behind and disappeared into the ether and then they fascinate you with fairy tales is it this guy is it that guy this is like who shot jr you're watching television man you're watching baby television stop watching baby television and listening to it you'll find out one day where it was let me tell you they'll 
I've, 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 I've scenario cast how this thing ends. If it was, in the unlikely event, it was someone who was totally altruistic and totally libertarian, let's pretend that they were, the Bitcoiners were originally right. What do they do? Uh, they tax him for capital gains on his wallet. He's not there. He doesn't reply because he's gone. He's in the ether. They, they do a forced seizure of the wallet. They've got quantum computing. They've got Aladdin. They've got everything. And they say, we've taken custody of these holdings due to amounts owing. And um, because he's not of a citizen of anywhere, because he's Santa Claus, he's in the ether somewhere, we've decided to pledge it as collateral for the green agenda and advancing transgender rights in corporations. And as a result, we're going to do good with this, as we're now the custodians of this uh, money, and we will therefore do it. And uh, Rothschild and Rockefeller and their little companies are quietly sitting there, and everyone will be, expenses will include private jet flights to Bilderberg conferences, etc., etc. And there you go. And there's your biggest Bitcoin holder in a bag. He hasn't paid his tax. Who's he paid his tax to on capital gains? Well, they've just introduced the law. Okay. Well, someone's going to say, well, you haven't paid it. Tax is power. It's actually often not about the money. It is your submission. Wearing the mask was submitting to their agenda. Taxation is your submissing to the higher po power over you. You owe it to yourself not to fund these people. To get libertarian, fully libertarian. And you can do it, justifiably. They are funding a debt Ponzi scheme. They are funding wars. We hear about the, the sin of Russia and Ukraine when they flipped an old USSR state in 2014 with five billion. You've got the tape of Newland bragging about it to the Polish minister. The Russians released it. So, but Yemen, killing all the Yemenis is not a problem. Saudi bombing away, not a problem. Bearing women up to their heads because they're teenage pregnant and stoning them, it's not a problem. These are our allies. So you just have to look at Tony Blair getting a knighthood and Assange about to be extradited. If you can't see the perversion of this world, why are you paying these same payment masters? Defund the extractors. That is another one of my catchphrases. My catchphrase was the question, defund the extractors. You reduce their power. Every time you stop submitting to them, you reduce their power. They want to go all hail the king and all that serves bend, and you pay homage. Power and money. History is all about the establishment of control over money and the power associated thereto. That is history. Okay, I'm currently studying economics. What field in finance can I pursue that I won't need to work in a bank but has room for becoming independent, an independent financial planner? Uh, run that one one more time. I'm currently studying economics. Yeah. What field in finance can I pursue that I won't need to work in a bank but has room for becoming an independent financial planner? Well, Any actually, I'm probably acting partially here in an unofficial, unregulated way as an independent financial planner. So understand, read history about the power of wealth, money, and how it was created, who's behind it, and how they've sought to retain that power. That is your best IFA, particularly for these times. It's a great time. Let me tell you the traditional street IFA that is actually regulated is the most dangerous weapon right now in these times. If you've got people in 40% in bonds and 60% in equities and saying, don't worry, this is just a black swan event, you know, that phrase like Greenspan, it was just an unforeseeable black swan event, you know, that we so well engineered with low interest rates. This is just a black swan that you're having the worst year and both are contracting radically. It'll all be back. You should buy the dip. Buy the goddamn dip is a meme, not an investment strategy. It's a meme that's run for 40 goddamn years on a pain-reducing federal system that is now going to fake you out like they're going to do and it's going to turn on you and they're going to let it collapse. Why? Because they are ready with the new system. They have the CBDC now. They have the digitalization. The timing is now. The great crescendo event is here, my friends. Christmas does come, even for young children. The day does come. They have all they need. Why population control? Because they have robotics and AI at a level that now serves in many levels. Why will they pay to keep people on UBI that they consider as useless eaters? You are the enemy. We are in a war. You're in a psyop war. It starts mentally. They, they, their product is fear. You fight them by laughing. 
and not getting scared. The product is absolutely fear. They have brought fear to the masses. Fear of COVID, fear of your neighbor. What a way to stop people from cuddling and getting the feel good factor and embracing and socializing. Divide and conquer to the point that you don't even halt, hug your own children. You can't attend your own parents' funerals. This is, this is their product. Divide, conquer, fear. You laugh by hugging your best mate having a beer, drinking from the same goddamn mug if you choose to, and uh, cuddling your parents, going out, making everyone else feel awesome, laughing and mocking the fuckers. If we make it through the Great Reset, how do we continue to win after the reset? If we make it through the Great Reset, let me just tell you, if you make it through the Great Reset and you're sitting on a pile of gold and silver, you're a goat. You are the flipping goat. Let me tell you, everybody will come and want to rub your horn. Know what I mean? Know what I mean? Um, you are the goddamn goat. Uh, let me tell you, you will be one of the few people that will have bridged wealth from a dying system and birthed it into the new rails. You're going from an old rickety train system that they're ready to blow up, a railway line. They've got this hyper rail now here, and you will carry the kitty over. Everyone else. They use this opportunity to strip and put you on there as a peasant in their new system. When they have you as a peasant, and this goes back to Matthew Tussler's wealth and his ability to say no and to stand on principle. It's much harder to stand on a principle when you have nothing and you're hungry. You've got to build wealth. We are wealth builders in reset times. That is my strap line for the reset sniper, the market sniper. By the way, there's lots of community members, the guys wearing Badgers, have a chat with them. Don't take it from me. Ask them what we like. Um, so I, I think I handled that. Yeah. Will privacy coins such as Monero come into their own and be in demand? So I love the principle of what Monero alleges to stand for. But then you come back. Are they going to let a single rat, a door open for one particular rat to run the barn? Why did South African as well, Fluffy Pony, get picked up for a commercial dispute involving an unpaid bill when he ran a bakery with another company by the feds. Feds, not normal police, when he was traveling in America. And then why did he get held for so long? And what happened there? I don't know. But what I do know is if they will never let you have your own money, they're going to do their damnedest to anyone who has true libertarian principles. So I want to be in Monero, but I fear Monero. I fear that it's a red flag. Every time you jump in something that is absolutely privacy and explicitly, I also fear it. Because if it's captured, boy, are you getting a tag put on the back of your head on there. So I wanted to, I wanted to win. In principle, I wanted to win. And actually, technically, there's been a couple. There was a guy who asked about old coins. You learn a lot about relative strength in bear markets. Because everyone's a hero. Even the shit flies in bull markets, as you know. It's the same. Um, in bear markets, you get to see relative strength. Bitcoin, uh, um, I mean, Monero has shown some relative strength relative to a number of other altcoins. I hate to say it, but Binance has as well. It's a centralized exchange. We're not fans of that. We understand. But Binance token did a little bit. There's been a few. Tron, surprisingly, showed a little bit. But I haven't looked at any of these charts recently. So that was like at one point when we were breaking down. I will do at the bottom when I feel it's the true bottom. I will do relative strength analysis in my community. They will watch me do it and they will know who I think is the best and then when the best time is. That is my goal to help provide them with wealth. And we're not buyers yet because it ain't over. The macro's got to play out. This debt system's got to break. You will know the headlines when it's broke, when things are breaking. And they haven't happened yet. Okay, given the correlation of asset prices to the real economy, can governments and central banks afford to lead us into a severe prolonged bear market? Or do they give up and play dumb when CPI prints sub 4 or 5%? So he was talking about a prolonged bear market. This is my primary scenario. So I have what I call, instead of this is what's going to happen and trying to guess the future. You can't do that. I have multiple scenarios and I define them and I write them. And as the news comes in and it starts leaning more like the one than the other, this is the difference. Why do we have the language scenario cost? Who am I to create new English words? Because forecast implies that you are personally committed to that view. Scenario costing means there could be many scenarios. So we scenario cost and we allow 
we never commit our mind. Because once you marry something, you only see the facts that cover that view. You don't see the pivot. So by o remaining open-minded minded, and not closing your door on the view, you allow much more dexterity and flippability. So we have scenario cast. So understand why I use this word. And a scenario cast that's my current favorite is that there's going to be a super spike dollar strength that is going to be disorderly. That's not because I'm a fan of the dollar, let's be clear. So when the euro came out, it fell from $1.60 to 80 cents. The first thing the silverback currency of the world did is assert its dominance, beat its chest and pound it. So they did actions by the Fed to show the dollar was still king. Right now, what's happening? Yuan, ruble, second system, all getting in, set up in the process. What's the dollar going to do? It's going to want to show the old guy is still the strongest guy in the room. That's what it's going to do. It's what they've shown they did before. So I keep on keeping on on what they've done before. Uh, and we remember and we, we rely on that. So how do they do that? They will have a higher interest rate increase than the likes of Europe and Japan. Well, we're already doing that. So my scenario cost is getting validated. And as long as it gets validated, I keep asserting it. The minute something weird goes on that shouldn't be happening, I start reviewing the other scenarios and saying, have we pivoted yet? Are we going somewhere else? So how does a dollar spike take place? There's a shortage, believe this or not, for all the dollars they've created, there is a shortage of dollars offshore America. Because the Triffin dilemma is they export dollars and run a deficit and import goods. They buy Toyotas from Japan. They buy Kias and Samsung phones from um, uh, Korea, South Korea, etc., uh, etc. Et and these guys send goods and they send dollars. Because people pay dollars for oil, people pay this. Now I know what you're going to say, but, but, now you can, some people can buy with yuan. That's exactly why they're going to assert dollar strength even more. Because they've got to show they're still the strongest and the main guy in the room. They pump the interest rates. Everyone with dollar debt can't pay is desperate for dollar. Ask Turkey. They're in that situation and other nations are going to become the USD try. And when that starts to happen, what do you see? A shortage of dollars. Erdogan wants all these citizens' dollars and gold ounces. Because he can sell gold also for dollars. He can pledge it as collateral. It's amazing how central banks never want to talk about gold, but everyone except Britain, that did brown rotten at the lowest price, guess who bought that gold? Some insider of large family repute. They changed the name on the, uh, the flipboard. I never saw anything move. Um, they picked that one up. Every other government is buying it like gangbusters. Russia's buying it. China's. China imports the most gold in the world and is the largest miner. These guys are hoarding like, like those cranky programs you used to see on Britain when you saw the guy who had all the black babs of rubbish in every room. These guys are hoarding like they're mental, mental loons. They are hoarding like it's going out of fashion. So it's, no, it's quite clear that they intend uh, to have some element of validation. Kissinger, the chief Satan himself, said that money is moving east. The, the future is moving east. What's moving east? I had the same discussion and I brought it up with Matt Letizia because we kind of had a discussion. I wanted his footballing community to hear some of the financial things which he's less prone to have because he's not a financial guy. And I pointed out that if you look at the three charts of the Asian session of gold, if you just bought at the open of the Asian session and held to the close, and then you sh uh, shorted the American session, the two, three different charts, if you were long during the American session, in actual fact, over 30 years, you've lost about 60% of your value on gold. Gold's much higher up than it was 30 years ago. So what's going on there? Every time it's the US session, they, they're selling down the price of, the, uh, of gold. And every time it's the Asian session, you could send an algo for this. Every time it's the Asian session, you've got an absolute parabola. And guess what? Comex doesn't do much delivery. All the delivery is happening in Shanghai. So somebody's hoovering up from the left, moving it to the right. From the west, moving it to the east. And with it, my friends, is the decline of empire for the west. And all the UBI communism that comes with it. And that's why I say, get mobile. Buying homes here now, if you can avoid it, get mobile.
start severing ties, start seeing the world. This is a great adventure. You don't only have to view it as an obstacle course, it's also adventure. Interesting new people to meet, great beautiful world, it's a framing. And you're going to come out a king. Just by showing up here, you are already better off. Because let's say you listen to my ideas and you say, I think he's wrong. You've at least thought him. And when you see a couple of the things I say drop, you're going to go, maybe. And you know what to do. Because I started to tell you. And if you're in our community, you'll know even more what to do. We've got community members that 10x their count on a single trade recently on the USD JPY. I think there was a little bit of cheeky money management excess there. I don't want to uh, overpraise that uh, event. But there's nothing like turning 10 grand into 100 grand and sticking 60,000 into gold and silver. Guess what? We're just listening to a guy that's saying, truly, if we were looking at the right price for gold in these manipulated markets, who specializes in it, it should be 83,000. That's crypto moves. If you can buy it for 1,800, it's pretty good. Anyone for a 40x? <laughs> plus, plus, plus? Well, put a hundred grand in that. You're laughing. So there was a guy who asked the question, what do we do post? You're minted. If you've actually held your wealth in metals, believe you me, people will be accepting metals in the new system. And it'll be re-rated. I don't think you get to trade gold, by the way. This is an important additional point. <clears throat> You'll, the paper markets will fail. You're not going to trade it. Let's say it goes to 83, just as a hypothetical number. You put a long on, it's not going to happen. They're going to keep manipulating that price. And then there will be a major brain fart. At some point, it'll start moving too quickly. They'll cancel the market. They'll stop the game. They don't want you to win. They'll stop the game. And then there'll be panic, social unrest, ATMs down, and then they'll just do a reval afterwards. Anybody who tried to trade it, the one moment that the biggest move was going to come, they're going to steal your Christmas turkey that you deserved, you've been waiting for all your time. Because that's what they do. They're not here to see you be smart and get rich. They're here to foil you at every attempt to protect your assets. They are your enemy. They're not your friend. Your wealth is power they lack. <coughs> your poverty is power they have over you. It's simple. Um, does the community trade HVF method exclusively? Exclusively we trade HVF method. In fact, I jump on people that start getting fancy with anything else. I said, don't do that in here. It's the best. I need and, to sorry, Francis. No, no, I'll, and I'll, I'll say why it's the best as well. Because I don't just make, everyone who purveys something, their product's the best. It's standard pitch. I don't, I, I don't just say that like that. No trading system gives you your entry level. That doesn't necessarily mean right now at market. Your stop and your target preordained that the entire idea can be put on and you can go play golf and that you know exactly how much you'll lose if wrong and you will even know how much you make if right and when you get over performance you know exactly when you will take off even on that extra bonus you get plus in the process of making that trade because we trade a lot of very big charts that take a time to unfold you will see that even on this USD JPY our interim targets is when you will rest and you just switch your computer off and you don't watch because you'll get shaken out why because people look at their P&Ls and then they go, oh damn, green number go down, must, must jump out now. And instead of getting mega Hulk green number, they just grab small green number. So you are your own worst enemy. It's a set and forget system. No nine screens for you. You can come to the pub and talk about reset with me and other people and your trades are on. I've got trades all over the place. They're all on now. They're all on. USD JPY long, yeah. Am I even thinking about it right now? No, USD Korean one, yes. Uh, short bonds, TLT, yes. Puts on Tesla, yes. Puts on ARK, yes. All in. Every single one in money. And I'm not saying that because I'm trying to be a big deal. This is the easiest time I've ever experienced for trading. We're trading system failure. Because you get the big macro model right, trading becomes easy. Dollar dominance, Swiss franc dominance over the euro. When the dollar's not killing the euro, the Swiss franc will. It's got to go down. Uh, the yen, even more so. The Korean one, it's all coming. Every single one of those, I can show you entries. We short maker today. It's making money out of my ears. I, the last short, I thought, oh, I don't know if I'll hold. There's going to be a bit of a rally. I closed it over a quarter of a million dollars and back on again. And it's throwing money at me again. You can do this too. I tell you, I'm a shit trader. I built the best method in the world. I'm a shit trader. <coughs> Emotionally, I shouldn't have been allowed near a fucking trading account. 
Okay, I've held and managed buy to let property for the last 10 years. Is it a good time to be selling buy to let property in the UK or am I okay to hold it for another 10 years? So this is, I'm going to give a reset answer to this. This is, so we've got the badges here, by the way, community members. Can you get one out for me, please? I'll show the guys a little bit closer. So this is a reset answer. So I speak to you out of three circles. I'll just do a little promo. Everybody loves their logo. You should, there's no reason to give a fuck about anybody's logo. But the reason why I, I think ours is relevant is because there were three things uh, 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 that were definitely coming. Where's the camera? There were three things that were definitely coming. <clears throat> There's a reset. And we called this, by the way, that branding was long before Klaus Schwab did this. I don't know why they came and parked their tanks on my name. Couldn't they have just chosen something else? Power down or something else. I mean, like, fuck you. I came up with that. But they didn't know who I was, so they ruined my day. Now everybody thinks I'm a copycat, and now, you know, so it is. But anyway, that's what happens. Uh, you don't get recognized. The market sniper, which is the HVF method on traditional markets, and then the fact that they brought out crypto, and it was this old, own unique market. And we are seeing those three circles merge. We are called the sniper and we're pointing at the point in the middle where all three of those things collide. And right now on my YouTube channels, I could put, post them on any of them. The things I'm saying today, I put it on the market sniper. It should be on the reset sniper. It should probably, we've spoken crypto. It could be on the crypto sniper. Those three planets are busy colliding into each other. Reset was one thing, because, well, you know, who's controlling money and power? HVFs on USD, JPY, that was, you know, okay, interesting. We're now trading reset. It's here. It's happening. But if this dollar spike moves, everything gets crushed. And you don't own dollars. You're in the UK. The Americans think they'll be good for a while until it suddenly breaks. Then it'll crash back down. Gold will be going up in dollars in a major market like that. When they fix it, if they try to, I don't think you get the full pivot this time. They're going to hold the pain longer. Why? Because we need an even bigger crash than COVID. So each time, as I've mentioned, the events have got uh, bigger by nature. That's why I told you about dot-com GFC. Central banks bring volatility, not stability. It's not their game. They are an inflationist that bring volatility. So how do you surpass locking everybody up at home killing all the SMEs, the hairdressers, the gyms, the, the restaurants. How do you surpass? Those people are all loaded up with debt that they had to pay because landlords didn't give them a full break on their rents. You've made them all weak. You've weakened them all. How do you surpass that level of globalized control? All the lepers were told to stay at home. Every nation state pulled that shit on all of us. How do you, do, how do you surpass that? How about you just take all their money out the banks? How about that? Well, Klaus shared it. I'm not making up stories. I'm just repeating somebody who seems to have a very good forecasting history. Well, I doubt it. Keep on keeping on is one of our other phrases. Continuation. Keep on keeping on. If somebody keeps getting something right, I'll listen. Maybe he knows something. Maybe he's in all the right conversations. How do you do that? Well, guess what? Nobody's buying shit. That's a great way to kill inflation. Nobody buys anything. And then you deal with the supply chain side to keep some power and you barely supply anything. So you then live in a world where there's barely any supply of anything and nobody has any money to buy anything. That's a great way to resize an economy. That can surpass. That's one way you surpass the bullshit you've driven in the previous one when you did the pandemic. And then when you put everyone in a vulnerable position where it's so hard to do, how quick would you all be able to pivot to bartering? It's going to be hard. Barter what? I don't want your old couch. What am I going to give you? for that food lettuce i don't know how do you how do you how do you monitor people aren't going to pivot quick enough you're going to have their pants pulled down and spank faster than you can say jack sparrow so you know good luck you don't have a substitute system they're just taking the whole fucking system away that's pretty that's pretty disinflationary and they say oh we killed inflation and everybody stripped the supermarkets of every piece of stock that's left there and now everyone's fighting over stolen goods uh to keep alive etc etc the people that are self-reliant win self-reliance big big t mark that you need to put in your diary that you've got to do and you've got to pull absolute self-reliance we love the likes thank you for the likes to everybody watching um so yeah i think that's it okay will i be able to succeed in this group given i'm a part-time trader and investor and i've only have a pot less than 7k so like everything, starting is everything. 
but pay your lessons cheap. So put a grand in there. Leave the others out. Practice form, practice discipline, start small. And the other thing I can't answer, you are the biggest variable. People always go, how much money will I make? I say, well, you're the variable, not me. My method has done amazing things for some people and others have cocked it up. If you don't money management and manage your losses, you're going to have a horrible time in it until you learn. Sometimes it's good to make a small mistake on small money and then you take your lesson and then you don't do it less. So how, how quick do you learn from responses? The question is actually you. You are the biggest variable in your life. It's a bit like saying how successful will you be in life. Trading is a microcosm of life. I don't know. I, I've managed to be successful yet fuck so many things up. Horrendously. Um, but how many times will you keep showing up? Will you give up? I don't know. I can't answer that. But if you are really motivated and you recognize this is the time of our lives where we really need to be awake and heroes, and don't forget, we'll be heroes, but we'll not be heroes recognized like Elon Musk and Steve Jobs are heroes. Those are control structure heroes. Real heroes are names you never hear. All your heroes are created for you by a system that wants you to have idols that are non-political that you'll follow so that at the key moments they can say something and direct the crowd. And everyone loves Elon. And if Elon says something, then it's true. Because he's smart and he's rich. Uh, where do you see Bitcoin and crypto as a whole in the next 10 to 20 years? So Bitcoin and crypto. I think Bitcoin survives. Uh, I think it could go a lot lower than people think. But I don't... You know, we do geometry and we do technical analysis. I've got a number of targets that I've shared on the crypto sniper for different patterns performing. There are, if it did a, a full round trip back to funnel, we had what's called the first cup gold nugget, the biggest continuation pattern that ran our targets and actually overperformed. If it returned to funnel, those funnels would have eight and 10. That's not a prediction. Um, I don't have an HVF. The most reliable pattern projecting is uh, inverted HVF for downside. I've got bear flags and things that I give some semblance to, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's an 80% performance probability. So Bitcoin can go a lot lower still, but I think Bitcoin will be controlled and owned. You know the scenario I just gave you with BlackRock owning the Satoshi? I think, I think it's already theirs. And as a result, it's in their interest to pump it. And then they just have an unbelievable balance sheet. So it, it, I think it should make up part. I just wanted to push back against the fastest horse, therefore only horse thinking. So be dispassionate about crypto. Remember, you're talking about something that's had 13 years of existence versus something that's had 12,000 years of existence. 13 years, and it was born into QE1, 2, and 3, the biggest reflation exercise uh, of an economy. It should have gone up. Now we see how strong it is in a bear. It's kind of like a promising boxer that hasn't had a, been handed pelucas to fight and has got 11 fights in a row that it's won. And now it's fighting Mike Tyson. Okay, now we'll see. So it's still got plenty to show, but I think it survives and goes up. Okay. Right, so a lot of the questions... Let me take an audience question oh, yeah. as well. No, pause for the Kieran. Thanks, you're doing a great job, by the way. Hand, uh, thumbs up for Kieran. Yay. 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 Just, a, just a quick one on uh, XRP. Uh, when you sort of see that sort of heading control central banks, just sort of insight in terms of what your views are. Yeah, so the question, uh, repeat the question um, for the guys on stream. Thanks for the on stream. I'm seeing the chats. Keep them coming. We'll pull a few of your questions in. Just want to respect the people that showed up here first and the community members. Uh, so the question was XRP. What's my take? So remember, I'm going to be as good as you on guessing. This isn't a technical question. Where I'm, if I can call genius, is the HVF method creation. That's the best thing I've ever done with my life. Uh, and I get real geometry and it is outlier probability and consistency and it gives high reward to low risk. In other things, I'm as bad and as good as you may be on any given day. XRP, I feel, is part of the control structure. What I mentioned on Ethereum, I think, holds for XRP. It's very fast, in fairness to it, in terms of transaction. It's a lot faster than Ethereum. They've caught it actively. All the big corporates that are part of the control structure, Microsoft, so many of the names. So they've gone, hey, we don't, we're not in the liberty here. We aren't interested in freeing people. We want to be part of the system. We want to, we, we're on the team of the jailers, not the prisoners. 
So as a result, I actually think as the jailers hold all the cards, they're going to do well. And I actually think this SEC uh, thing is part of a compression. They're probably getting all the insiders in. Nancy Pelosi indicator over here. They're all wailing in there. Uh, we will have a bottom at some point, and I think it could go very far. So they have a service point for it as well. There isn't going to be the one winner. This is my slight point problem with Bitcoin Maxis. There's never the one internet company. You know, we had the dot-com bubble. Was there the one internet company? No. You kind of have New World Order Amazon.com, which is retailer, I suppose. You have New World Order collect your data and sell it all out to prostitute you away, the Google. You, and they also got YouTube. Isn't it funny how we never had antitrust on any of this? You know, Android, the biggest platform on the phone. YouTube, the second biggest search engine, to Google, the largest search engine. Wow, you, you'd think there'd be an antitrust lawsuit in there somewhere. No, no, there isn't. But anyway, so there are some pretty big-ass players that dominate big spaces. But there's also Apple. There's also So you'll have a number of winners. And then you're going to have a hollowing out of the rats and mice. And they're going to go down. Uh, I don't think too much future for the Bitcoin fork tokens, really, too much. Apart from possibly Litecoin. Um, that's one I'd be a bit concerned if I had like a fortune. If you suddenly gave me a fortune on Bitcoin SV or cash, some guys swear Craig Wright is Satoshi. They might be right, they might be wrong. Um, he sounds a bit arrogant and not that altruistic and quite state friendly in his comments. That's not the, hey, I'm going to give people the right to be their own sovereign banks. So it doesn't sound right. You know, I just have a bullshit detector and the smell test. It doesn't pass the smell test for me. So I'd be dumping those personally. Could I be wrong and regret it? Absolutely. Without a technical chart, you know, I won't have my genius to pull on the HVF method. By the way, any queries and questions? Support at the market sniper to everyone watching. Let's take some of the guys. Time, ADBC, Jesus, Jesus, whoop, someone, whoa, the comment went too far away. <laughs> this is that. Oh, yes, how are you? Good to see you again, by the way. I remember you. Yes, I remember. I still got your little red tin. Yes, I should give it back. Great to see you again. Uh, we did dirty deeds done dirt cheap. A little bit of cash uh, was always good for the system. Great to see you. How are you keeping? Um, have you done much tangible asset allocation to transfer the network and why there's so much hatred and hate on that channels and under the principle of the network so that there's a shift here and something like that? Yes. So I'm going to try to repeat that as accurately and jump in if I'm misconstrued. So um, asset allocation to China. Why, what are we doing in terms of the space of the Asian half? I mean, the question is, there's another half and it's winning in some senses on quite a lot of fronts. It's the workshop of the world and a reference to sort of Asian hate, like uh, antagonism towards uh, China and most of, well, say, particularly Trump's <coughs> doctrine, Biden's more antagonism to Russia, but that's kind of China standing behind Russia to a degree, but trying to pretend not to. Um, so. In terms of the politics and the active antagonism, in my personal view, this is Punch and Judy show for the, the kids. You're all little children looking at a Punch and Judy show. And there's one man on his left hand going, bad, bad Chinese yellow man. And then there's an American, you know, the American one with a chunch and hitting, hitting, hitting. And then the Chinese man is going, bad, bad American man and all of this. Um, but actually, all governments are captured, in my opinion. Unfortunately, that means probably Putin as well. Some people like the idea of Putin. Um, so they're all captured. And they're all largely at the top, as highest, highest level cap captures. So that doesn't mean you don't get junior ministers and medium and quite higher people that are actively looking for the national interest and resent the other enemy and all of that. Uh, but they all, in terms of agenda, are controlled and co-opted. You've got to look at Nixon, the history of Nixon and Kissinger going over to China and welcoming them into the, the world and the direction. You've got to look at the fact that Kissinger is saying it's the future. So if you listen to the really powerful people, they are moving the game there. And why would you want to move it to China if you're bringing in a Bolshevik communism? Well, here's a really compliant model of people that are properly pinned down and locked down at a drop of a hat. It's a great model for them, not for us. So that's, I think that's Punch and Judy show the politics. I wouldn't get too distracted by it. It's there for your distraction. The asset allocation is interesting one. China scares me from a point of freedom and free rights, <coughs> without a doubt. So anything asset, I would prefer to have like a, a fund somewhere else that owns Chinese assets 
that are handpicked and in a certain segment. If I could get, um, let's just say, I wouldn't want an ETF, but let's say a, a share of a gold miner in there, that could be potentially very interesting. The irony, just to stretch your question a teeny bit, um, Russia uh, is those Russian mining. You've got cash hemorrhaging energy companies in Russia that's selling for nothing. You don't have a culture of equity. Chinese gamble. They have a culture of equity there. Russia, they, they lived, they've had communism for a long time. The, 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 the people don't have a culture of equity. You can get cash hemorrhaging energy companies. But the only problem is how do you buy them if you're in the West? That's where Five Flags, again, hey, you can have a Swiss broker, you can have a broker in elsewhere. Because if you're in the UK, good luck trying to open a brokerage that'll offer you uh, a company. I, I interviewed um, Resources Man, a really smart uh, chap, uh, the big uranium guy. Help me with his name now. It's been so terrible with uh, and the Rick Rule. Thank you. How can you forget Rick Rule? He even rhymes. Rick Rule, smart ass. Uh, no, not smart ass. Very smart guy. Very awake. Li likeable. Very likeable. Respect him a lot. I'd watch his shit if I were you guys. Um, all his stuff. He says polymetals, silver miner in Russia. He's still speaking to people uh, in the middle management. Unbelievable. Big silver miner. Trading for nothing. JP Morgan's Russia fund. It's on the floor. If you're prepared to wait for time, there's no HVF, there's no technical sign yet. That thing's been smashed. But everyone needs energy. Everyone needs oil. And there's no, all the, all the Europeans and the Westerners were forced sellers. All the big funds forced sellers, they're not allowed to be there. And there's no culture of equity in Russia. There's no buyers. That's just a skewed market due to retail and institutional money having to exit. That's not a reflection of value. When you can buy a company at about two times earnings that is hemorrhaging cash and the price of oil is, guys, this inflation ain't over until oil goes to $60, back down to $60. And every time people call, I think it's setting up an HVF. We've been watching it right now, an upward swing further on oil. This is just going to turn the heat up on the pain. Europe, 37.2 producer price inflation. Eurozone, what is that number? What does it mean? It's the inputs that manufacturers and people that are making things are having the, seeing the cost increase on their product. What do you think that does to their retail prices? They've got to get back, even with a bit of margin compression. 37.2. And Spain jumped to double digits on their official fingers. Never mind that everything a government tells you is a lie. Your default position on government is everything you say is a lie or an understatement. So if they're stating 10%, you can be sure Spain's at about 16 or 17%. Uh, so with that kind of inflation, energies are going nowhere. I almost prefer Russia. I'm changing your question slightly, but Russia and their means to buy Russian stocks. There's no culture of equity. Chinese tech has crashed. If you look at the C, QQQ, that's the NASDAQ in the uh, US, but if you put the C, it's the Chinese version. They've done their tech crash way before. It looks like the ARC chart even lower. You could go into tech again. Because let me tell you, those guys are smart, they're hardworking, and they've, what they haven't got, they've stolen from America a long time ago. So there's going to be big-ass names winning uh, there. So you could go, but it's not the time for tech yet. I would wait for reset. So you want to you wanna make sure your finance makes it into the next system. Gold isn't a hold forever. It saves you through the most dangerous period, the two insurance. Once they've, they've put the new rails down and everyone's on the new system, I'm offloading gold. Everyone will then become gold bulls. I'll sell into a blow-off high, and I'll go buy the Chinese tech, I'll go buy the Russian energies, uh, and I'll have locations too, and I'll hope to be smart. Could I be wrong? Of course, always. So let's try to hold a comment and bring someone in. As a holder of a small buy-to-let portfolio, it's definitely intriguing me what is best way to protect what I have built. So buy-to-let in the UK, they've been increasing the, the costs of you being a buy-to-let landlord more regulations if you're in homes of multiple occupancies you've got to you know, fire all sorts of things to protect you they don't like there used to be your mortgage could be deducted um, and you could take costs if you had a mortgage etc and various things on buy to let so they're rolling away the benefits they want to be the big ultimate landlord they don't want a bunch of rats and mice making money and being like them and maybe undercutting their rental prices in an area so i think they're going to make it punitively expensive and if the properties are at a high, like they are here in St. Albans, and interest rates are likely to spike a bit higher still, 
I would be tempted to offload. That's just me. I might be wrong. I would sell property into this high. I expect contraction. So that was that question. Let's go for the next. Yeah, uh, an explanation on how the USD will eventually fall and realize its true price. So all fiats will fail as part of being a debt Ponzi scheme. The most dominant one will be used as a stick to break the others before being broken itself. And the new CBDCs will be designed to undermine the dollar to break it. So the new system breaks the old. The old biggest man in the room beats up everybody else in the room. And once he's done, they let the lion in the cage and he eats the oldest. And the lion is the new, uh, the new system. So dollar gets broken on the super spike. It'll die of strength initially because they'll bring in a new system and say, we can't have this. Because the dollar is now the reason because of the inflation. It won't be the reason. It will be proliferation will be the reason. But the dollar will spike in strength. Interest rates will go higher on the American side than others. Everyone else fails, can't afford to buy things because they've got to buy a lot of it in the dollar. It goes too far. It overshoots. It has a major blow off. We have the whole reset. And then they introduce a new system. It's a time frame. <laughs> time frame. Well, I wish I had a silver ball for that. It's not an HVF, but you're talking macro ge geopolitical. But I've been quite bold and I've said we're in it now. It's 22, 23. You will have seen a lot of these things drop, otherwise I'm wrong. <coughs> and I'll accept it. I'll say, hey, I'm wrong. If we're in 24 here and things are still pootling on and we have a minor recession and they just drop the rates and they go back to QE and they reinflate the stock market and all of that, I'm wrong. So to make a, on my primary scenario cost, I have that other op possibility, but I don't think so. This isn't going to be another, you know, just reflate, dip and reflate again. They've got a new system they want to bring in. You've got to, to bring in a new system, you've got to kill the old. Because otherwise people will say, I'll just stay in the old system. Fuck your technology and surveillance finance. You've got to take away the option and say, this is the only way. If I'm showing you the exit, the fire exit, and there's only one, you're going down it. If I give you two options, you're going to go to the one that's nearest or suits you best. So you've got to kill one to squeeze everyone in. Because people are inert. They're inertia. They'll stay with what they know. Okay. <clears throat> Is the possible future invasion of Taiwan the catalyst for the USD-Korean one trade? So remember this. People will talk about geopolitical events like an invasion of Taiwan by China. And they'll be very interesting and there'll be headlines that will banner catch the eye. But let me say this to you. The key thing is the financial system. They will keep trying to pivot you away from what's going on in the financial system. There is a financial system failure. They will mask by all sorts of wars, uh, hegemonies, uh, expanding empires like that. Um, I mean, I'm asking what will be the story that spikes the South Korean one? Will it be debt? Will it be growth? Will it maybe be a mer being merged into China or war with South North? Korea, what will they, what kind of distraction? But I trade, put on the trade first, I get the story later. That's why we're not late to the trade. By the time you wait for the story, you're late for the trade. So make the money first. The big thing is make the money and don't fascinate on geopolitics. The geopolitics will, will explain themselves in time. We were short oil to single digits. We were short Carnival, but Carnival's a cruise liner. And its second biggest cost after wages is oil. Why was it going to go down? Well, pandemic, old people dying. Well, old people are the biggest customers for cruise liners. And now that now you, you 80, everyone's dying of a flu. So there you get the story later. I, I never worked it out. I never got there, but then it proved it showed me. So I never guessed right, but it doesn't matter. I made the money. That's okay. I'll take that. <laughs> um, I need to leave the UK. How do I persuade the family to move? <laughs> <laughs> Go on holiday. Go on holiday and take your family with you. You've got to do some holidays. You've got to get, that's the biggest thing. And, and uh, we're mainly a male dominated audience here, but you've got to bring the wives along on the journey. You know, you've got to explain without terrifying them because women scare easier and they prefer to cling to what's known. That's a generalization. Some women are absolute leaders and barnstormers. But you've got to bring them along and introduce the concept slowly. It's like you're giving someone a bucket of cold water to the face in a cold winter day when you puke this narrative up on them. It's deeply unwelcome as a story. So uh, bring them along. Say, listen, we've got a challenge. In life, you always get challenges. This is what's happening. Globally, we've got this challenge. We can be passive and get swamped by the tidal wave. 
or we can say, trust me, let's take action together. And you're part of the team and I want you on board. You know, you've got to bring them on board. So that, that's the best advice I can, I can give. Let me take a question from a, yeah. an attendee. Yeah. My, my question is on the asset prices, and given the correlation to asset prices in the real economy. Can they, um, are they just going to wait until the CPI prints up 4.5% before they potentially back off? Like how, how do you see, do you, do you have like a time frame in mind? So asset, as, what, what will go on with it? How will asset prices, so we're talking about any specific assets, we're talking about no, property, no, no, stocks, real, real estate, every, all of it. The whole thing, real estate. Yeah. So o overall, if you're, if you're BlackRock and Vanguard and your biggest shareholders are probably entities that are owned by the big families, you want to buy everything cheap and you want to, you want to throw a proper bucket of cold water over the peasants. Uh, so you're going to press the pain big to validate. The bigger the, the change the, that you're trying to make, the bigger the pain you've got to cause to get the people to make the move you want to do. So if you absolutely take all their power away, their money, their wealth, reduce their asset prices, they're in your palm of your hand. Um, so in terms of answering that question, I think you're going to see a bigger dip in asset prices than you <coughs> saw in the great financial crisis and the COVID. They've really got to take everything you have away. This is a pump and dump scheme and it's like a megaphone. Each upswing has <coughs> got to be more money to pump it up to have an even bigger dump and you're going ever broadening structure so they're, they're, they've introduced volatility and volatility is bigger wilder crises with ever bigger swing since when do you have so many crises dot com booth think about 2000 till today we barely 2022 and we're talking about major depressions substantial depressions that have brought about financial tools you've never heard of before no one knew what quantitative easing was in 2000 you found out about what it was in 07. Now everybody knows. Nobody knew what a bond was or a debt. If you're paying any attention, now you do. Or printed swaps. Printed swaps, CDOs, all of this. You all know what these things are now. So assets are going to get killed. <clears throat> Timing now started already. They're already getting killed. I'm still short the s and I'm still short the NASDAQ. I'm still short not ARK. Could I be wrong? Could I be giving back? Absolutely. Those aren't HVFs. That's a macro opinion. Uh, they were headed the towards has the megaphone type structure yeah. doesn't it with the, the lots of drops has that like i've seen it yeah it's also got a head and shoulder in there look as well if you follow us on twitter you'll see a couple of the head and shoulders. major reversal head and shoulders if you do complex head and shoulders you'll find out about it but you're right there's a broadening structure in there so we're based at the end of the questions the other is it's all about the great reset surviving it um how to get through the low uh, amount of money so you've answered a lot of them already but that's the gist of the last questions now yeah so i'll finish with something hopefully optimistic give us a like everybody streaming and well done to everyone who showed up we appreciate it yeah i'll still be around we'll finish the stream we'll have a few beers you want to talk to me we're going to be about um take action even wrong action is better for you mentally and than anything else don't sit in the headlights and read papers and get paralyzed take action Assume that I might be accurate on a few things. Actually, we're not bad on that. We're pretty accurate on a lot of big things. I don't blow my own trump. I told you I'm a garbage, emotionally set up person for trading. So if I say, pay myself a half ass compliment, it's probably some truth. We've shown that. This is a debt ending event. The next crash is your biggest crash. The problem reaction solution that is coming is the vast. Now you can get paralyzed, or you can take control and say the opportunities to build wealth actually occur at the most extreme events. The true valuation, billionaires are made in wars in South Africa, dimensions that are listed in 1987 crash. I can give you countless examples. You could transform your personal wealth and support and help a lot of people in the process. Try and include that in it, what you do. It's not just your family, your wife, your daughters, you should be doing that anyway, but people around you. Make, become many messianic about it. Talk about it, it is a bit all-consuming, but respect, it's the obstacle course, but it's also the opportunity. There's a big golden prize at the end. I wanted to say rainbow and I decided against it. Uh, we've had enough of that uh, at the end of that obstacle course for you to go make.
there's a big prize. You know, like the Chinese, uh, the Japanese program where they have those obstacle courses and then you hit the button and it all goes. You're going to finish. Takeshi's Castle. Thank you. This is Takeshi's Castle. You're going to get wet. You're going to get a bit battered. But you're going to push a button and it's all dancing girls and ladies jumping out of cakes for you if you're a winner. Uh, so you've got to get to that point. Um, and this is the game. And take your family with you and take your friends with you. You can be a micro leader. If you've got lots of time, be a mini leader. If you've got even more time and you're good at it, people will push you up and make you a major leader. Start a YouTube channel. Refer people. Help people find honest brokers to do honest things that protect sound money principles in a time where everything is being inverted perversion deception is the order stand on principle think matt Letitia. that's who you want to be that's how you focus good people can win be the nice guy you can win be the smart nice guy instead of the naive nice guy when there's bullshit out act on it and protect yourself from it every action you take in the course of this period will be positive you know what they're doing you know who the liars are in the game there was that great riddle you're trapped in a prison and you get one question and there are two guards that look identical and there are two pathways one is eternal damnation hell and a grisly death and the other one is your freedom two identical guards are guarding you and one always lies he always will lie to you and the other one always tells the truth you've been cast the riddle of the time you can't tell them apart which path is the way out you get one question and you don't want a 50 50 you want the full answer if you don't know that riddle go and google it it's fascinating you are at those times the thinking man smart man chooses the right path a hundred percent of the time that is a point of principle and principle is the key moment of these times. Sound money, gold, silver should be a massive part. People say, oh, 5%. 5% normally when you're insuring against a sane society. At times of complete <coughs> perversion and inversion, well, how much money do you want to make? How much wealth do you want to preserve? I want to preserve it all, not 5%. You'll come out bigger the other end. So I'm overweight. I'll say that. Many people say, portfolio theory that's disgusting and then you'll get people who say I'm all in Bitcoin hundred percent so you've got to decide but don't be all in in any one thing there will be a place for Bitcoins not yet technically it's not right and I will go back in okay that's it thanks for the stream shout out to everyone for coming Yay! <laughs> goodbye everyone thanks very much appreciate the likes Yes.